let's do this again. So we have um, Nabanita with us. Am I pronouncing your name right? Yeah, yeah. All right, awesome. Uh, and she's going to be talking about leveraging linked data using Python and Sparse SQL. And um, 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 a little bit about her. She's a data scientist with ACI Worldwide. She's also the education co-lead for um, women and in AI. AI. Yeah, uh, Ireland, and she's a Python and data science in, um, instructor as well. Um, so without further ado, um, Nabhanita, maybe you can yeah. um, share your screen. Yes. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can. All right. So um, can I start? Yeah, of course. <laughs> There you go. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much uh, for that introduction. Um, so today I'll be talking about leveraging linked data using Python and Sparkule. Um, this is something that I came across when I was studying my master's uh, in Trinity College Dublin here three years back, and I thought that is really handy. Um, I really love NLP applications and Sparkule um, and data from Wikipedia. Um, we all know that uh, it's it's very helpful for us to build models and get um, text data uh, from online uh, resources. So this is uh, this is a small um, presentation on how you can get that data from Wikipedia. So uh, the first thing that uh, comes to the mind is why Wikipedia. It's basically because it's um, it's not just it's got loads of data, but the, but the kind of the nature of data that we have in Wikipedia, it's uh, cross domain, um, it's got different uh, data, it's um, multilingual, it contains data from uh, more than uh, 300 languages. It's also freely accessible, um, um, you know, there, it's you always Google um, data. If you need information about anything, you would your first stop would be to go to Wikipedia and um, search for that. Um, and so it's also automatically evolving because the data in Wikipedia is crowdsourced. So um, all these things make Wikipedia uh, a really rich, um, uh, informative database that we can leverage for NLP applications. Uh, there are two ways of getting data from Wikipedia. One would be uh, a traditional web scraping, and the other one would be uh, using linked data. So um, I'll have a demo on how to use uh, the traditional web scraping using uh, Wikipedia Python library. So this Python library is basically a wrapper around uh, Wikipedia, which uh, lets you um, not code everything um, from scratch for scraping using a uh, the HTML files, it just lets you uh, uh, load a page into a Wikipedia page object and then uh, surf its contents and the URLs present in that link, the image links present over there um, using that particular library. And we'll look a little bit um, into what linked data is and how we can uh, leverage it using a Sparkle wrapper, which is again a Python library, um, which lets you query the open um, data uh, from Wikipedia. So um, I'll share my uh, notebook here um, just for to demo the webs, um, the traditional web scraping part. So. Um, you will need the uh, the Python library Wikipedia in order to be able to use it. I'm using uh, Google Colab here, so Beautiful Soup is already available over there. So installations and imports, and then the first thing that I do here is to search um, this use the search functionality here on the Wikipedia Python library. So like anything you search on Google Chrome, you can search here as well. And uh, if it finds that entity over there in Wikipedia, it'll, it's going to give you a list of pages that is related to it. So this this list, all of these um, um, pages, they contain the name, uh, the headings, they contain Python. So that's why I got this response. Um, from that list, I uh, got the, I just, for an example, took the first one, which is the Python programming language um, that EuroPython is all about. Um, and if you can see, um, I'm basically uh, calling this function here page, and I'm trying to load that uh, particular page's contents as an object. So the type of this object would be a Wikipedia page object, and it also contains different properties. 
uh, like the contents so this content is basically all the all the language texts uh, that's available and that is the most important part for us uh, to build a corpus for uh, natural language processing stuff um, and then you can also get the URLs um, sorry You can also get, uh, so the, the the total length would be 39,061 characters just for one page, so, the, so you can understand how rich that data could be for you. And this is, um, it's a bit more, um, you know, collapsed data over there. Um, this is a sample of the contents of the structure, how the page comes up from Wikipedia. So different contents are uh, separated by these headings, the subheadings basically. And so when you're processing this data, you might want to keep it or remove it uh, based on, um, you can use regex in order to filter these things. You can um, you can access the URL of the page. You can access the different cat categories in this page. You can um, access the images. Uh, how you can use this information is either you can uh, just get uh, search for different topics and get all the related pages and um, store that data. You can also uh, go through all the different links that are related to this page. For example. You can um, you can query all these data, uh, all these uh, list of pages, um, and there will be also another object for external links. So uh, another property for external links, and you can uh, loop through those external uh, those links uh, for Wikipedia pages and get those related pages as well for creating specialized corpora. So a page related to uh, the current page, uh, you can get all those data and store it again. And for computer vision applications as well, you can scrape pictures from this data. And so the main idea would be here, you will get um, um, annotated data for um, computer vision applications as well for natural language processing applications. You can also get annotated data um, or you can um, create some logic to create those um, annotations automatically. And we'll see that how we can do that using uh, open web. And the other way of doing this, so if you need, so the only caveat here, only problem here is that uh, the Wikipedia library do not give you back the table, but there is a really simple way of obtaining the tables from a Wikipedia page. So you can just load the uh, objects. Uh, so it also sends, it, it also gives you um, the HTML uh, page layout uh, from Wikipedia, of that Wikipedia page. And you can basically parse it using beautiful soup. So this is a long text, just printed it out for showing. And then um, you can use beautiful soups, find all tables. So the class for the table for Wikipedia would be Wikitable. So you can uh, query that uh, from beautiful soup. And then uh, this particular page contains only one table, but you can get all the list of tables and you can parse them like so using pandas read HTML. Um, and you just have to convert tables that that part to a string because it would still be a, a soup object. And that's a that's a brief presentation on how you can um, how you can um, scrape data from Wikipedia. Um, and I'll just go back to my presentation. So now that we've seen uh, how to uh, scrape data from, scrape the contents from uh, DBpedia, we'll look at how to um, scrape, uh, how to get the data from link data. So the concept of link data, like you can see, is about uh, different things or entities in, uh, you know, tangible, non-tangible in the universe um, to be able to be um, tracked and related to the other entities that they're that they're related to, so it creates like a meshwork of things. Like you can see, this is one of the most um, used uh, diagrams of linked data, and it's actually how this how it looks like. Um, so we'll look at we'll take a closer look at what these are, but we'll look at. Um, First, what DBpedia and Wikidata is. So the information that we have on Wik Wikipedia, they're all um, some sort of entities, and uh, those and and the entities are linked to other entities based on a relationship again. And this this relationship, this this huge uh, crowdsourced data, is also um, extracted 
and um, is um, extracted to get all the structured information from there. And uh, this information is made available on the web in the form of linked data. So DB DBpedia was um, um, ideated before Wikidata, it came before, and uh, it started looking, uh, getting the semantic information in a structured way from Wikipedia. The most recent one, um, not most recent, uh, it's I think it's there for three, four years now. So Wikidata is, um, is also a free and open source knowledge base, but the only difference here would be from, from DBPA, you'll get uh, data from Wikipedia. And from Wikidata, uh, Wikidata gives you, gets all the data from uh, different other um, platforms of Wiki where they have um, more uh, information on different other things like Wikibooks and, um, and so on. So, uh, you can leverage both of these. Their endpoints would be different. Uh, by endpoint, I mean from where you could query the data. And to take a closer look at how open data um, looks like or how it's built, so um, I presented this um, once um, with the PyLadies Dublin um, chapter here in Ireland. So um, I took PyLadies, I assume PyLadies as an entity on the internet, and you will find PyLadies as a DBpedia resource on the internet. Um, so PyLadies is an entity for us, and PyLadies uh, is situated in three different uh, locations, New York, Dublin, Dublin, and New, uh, London. So this is not an exhaustive list. So, And the relationship of PyLadies with New York, Dublin, and London would be that they're, they, they're related by the location of PyLadies. So this is the most simplest way um, how this could look like. Now, PyLadies is also an organization. So it is a type of organization. So the type relationship comes in over there. And uh, similarly, like PyLadies, we have women in AI, we have women in computing, we have women who code. So all these three are, again, in entities, and they're also types of organizations. So this is how these entities and PyLadies, they're related to each other. Now, women in AI is also very active in Dublin, so I can safely um, draw a line there and have a location with, have a relationship called location with Dublin. Ideally, all these three uh, would have uh, would be connected to New York, Dublin, and London, and the, these three locations will also be connected to women in AI, uh, com women in computing, and WWC. And that that is going to basically, uh, if I join all the dots, it's going to look like a real bad meshwork. So I just wanted to keep it simple here, and then. It's not always that all the relationships are going to hold an entity. So it could also be a literal or just a simple string value. So for example, PyLadies um, URL, you'll find the website link for PyLadies as well. So it's basically going to be a string. Um, and then uh, most Wikipedia objects will have an external link uh, relationship with another entity, which is related to it, but doesn't have maybe any specific relationship uh, with the with the other entity, so um, and and these links are both ways because you'll find Python programming language in PyLadies uh, page, and you'll find uh, PyLadies page uh, linked to Python programming language. So it's the arrow is both ways. So this is basically a closer look of how open um, web, uh, how that a little a fraction of that huge mesh work could look like. And then the question naturally comes that why why link data? Why we DBpedia or Wikidata? That's because um, it contains huge knowledge that's given. But then uh, with DBpedia or Wikidata, the way the data is stored, it, it actually retains the semantics of information. So it's rich for NLP applications where you need the semantics. So you need to understand what's the data in it, how it looks like. For example, if you've got, um, for, for example, PyLadies type organization and PyLadies uh, location Dublin can naturally be inferred as PyLadies is an organization which is located um, or a chapter is present in Dublin. So the semantics of that information is present over there. Uh, it's also easily and freely accessible. And for us, it's good because we have um, Python wrapper available around it and it's quite fast. And then, yeah, it's for data mining applications for machine learning and NLP and also for CV like <coughs> we saw there. Um, and how do we query this data? So we use Sparkle queries um, to query this data. 
Uh, Sparkle is basically a semantic query language to retrieve and manipulate data stored in RDA format. So this, the, the huge mesh work that you saw uh, earlier is, is stored in RDA format. It's a very simple uh, triple data representation format. Uh, on the left-hand side, if you can see, um, I have resource description framework, which is a standard model for uh, data interchange on the web. And this triple is represented as the subject, predicate, and object. So if Python is a type of programming language, so Python is the subject there, the relationship of Python and programming language is type. So that's the predicate. And then object would be the programming language. So similarly, PyLadies would be the subject if I go back to the previous um, um, diagram. So <coughs> PyLadies um, would, be uh, would be a subject and predicate would be type and object would be um, that it's a type of organization. Um, and then PyLadies uh, would also have predicate or called location, which would be basically the re relation and the object would be Dublin. So that's how um, the, the resource description framework works. And so this is a comparison of how a Wikipedia page and how a resource page could look like and how they're related to each other. So how, how you can um, browse them on, on your internet. So on the left, you've got PyLadies and you've got the, um, <clears throat> the introduction of the summary here of, for PyLadies. And on the right hand side, you've got this DBO abstract, which is also a property um, of, of, of PyLadies. So this is basically a DBpedia resource. So this abstract here, um, you have um, the summary of PyLadies, and that's exactly what you have in there. It's the same here. Um, and then if you <coughs> see here, so there's DBO, DBO. So DBO means DBpedia orgs uh, resources. So mostly um, the the entities about DBP, which are there in Wikipedia, they're all um, uh, modeled in a way uh, to have these particular properties all throughout consistently for most of these pages or similar pages. So DBO is basically a vocabulary um, in object-oriented programming terms. You could say that um, an object will have some properties associated with it. So similarly, and these, um, these different vocabularies aggregates several specific types of properties uh, related to the kinds of things they're addressing. So for example, if you've got FOAF, the third point over there, it's called friend of friends. So it's it's it holds information about persons, people. So it'll have um, like FOAF colon um, first name, FOF colon last name, it'll have gender, it'll have height, um, and anything specific to human beings or characteristics of human beings. Um, then they have so basically on the on the left hand side what you're seeing is a website or a web page that that contains an URL and on the right hand side you're seeing a DBpedia resource or an open data resource and that's basically an URI which is universal resource uh, identifier so that's not essentially a web page so it's basically a resource a data instance over there and uh, if you see the Wiki page wiki link would be um, is an is an um, property which contains all the different um, links that are present on this page and uh, you can see Los Angeles is here um, it's also mapped here and then mentorship is here so you can find uh, these uh, related links as well. And the last thing to notice uh, here is that you've got two versions of the abstract. So you've got one Spanish and one English version. So uh, it's helpful for NLP, multilingual um, NLP applications or any application which is um, which is not in English, basically. So how to construct a Sparkle query? So this is the most uh, basic form of Sparkle query where you're querying basically select star in SQL languages, basically um, selecting star. Uh, from star. So I'm selecting all the subject predicate and object where at least one subject, um, one associated predicate and one associated object is present. Every variable in Sparkle query is associated with a question mark in the beginning. So over here, everything is star. So everything is a variable right now. And all the subjects will be stored in the question mark subject as a variable. All the relationships will be stored in question mark predicate as a variable and uh, question mark objects. So all the objects, related objects will be stored in the question mark object variable uh, as a result of this query. 
and then just to um, specify this a little bit more. So if I want to just get all the entities or all the subjects and the objects, which has a relationship called label, then I could use this uh, query where, where I'm selecting the entity here as a variable, um, the subject, and select the object there or the value as name. And then that should have a relationship RDFS label, which is basically um, the string, which is the heading of the page uh, mostly. So this looks pretty simple. Um, and this is a little bit, um, uh, just a bit more advanced version of a Sparkle query that I did for uh, to get uh, information on all the athletes uh, that are there on Wikipedia, their birth dates, their heights, their names, um, the abstract information. That is a summary of what they do and uh, who they are. So and in and above that, I have the prefix. So, this, so consider this as importing the objects or importing the vocabulary. And here I'm saying that um, if this entity is of a type athlete, get me their information. And if I have a if I have a semicolon here, that means the next relationship is also related to this uh, particular um, athlete or this particular entity. So for all for all those entities who is who is the type athlete get me their birth date get me the height so i am again using a semicolon here and then using dbo height so it's saying if it has a relationship height then get me the height as well the name then abstract and then it all you can also extend it to as having optional so if i hadn't used optional for uh, dbo country it would basically give me uh, only those athletes who has a country associated with their um with their resource um and it would um it would not include those athletes who do not have a country associated with them so that's why i have that as optional then you um and then i you could use filter in order to filter the languages and i can use limit and offset again uh, in a similar way how you could use them in sql so this is a little uh, example here on how you can construct a sparkle query to get it could get data so you can get the data in tabular format and json format in xml format so that's another advantage of using um sparkle queries uh, you can you can obtain the data in different other formats um and uh you could use it just the way you would like it so now i'll go for a little demo on how to use sparkle wrapper so so the first thing that we need is the Sparkle wrapper um, Python library. Um, install it um, and then import the relevant modules, import pandas as well. Now, this is the endpoint from where you can query this data. You can actually uh, pilot your queries here. You can um, check, you can execute your queries here and see uh, what response you're getting. Now, if you're directly using this query over there, you might have to alter it a little bit based on um, the Python string uh, because I'm using uh, Python strings here. So I'm, I, I might be using some escape characters here. So you need to take uh, care of that. Uh, but you can directly execute um, queries, uh, Sparkle queries here and check the response and then plug it in in your code. So the first thing I, I need to initiate where I want to um, execute this, the endpoint. The next thing I need to do is get the set the query. Um, set, I need to set the return format. So I'm using JSON. It's easier for me to use JSON here. And then the next line would be to um, execute the query and then use pandas json normalize um, and get the results into a data frame so that i can use that well um, you can if you can see you there's um, 18 total 18 results for python and they're also of different languages so if you want you can use the filter keyword in the query or you can use um, the filter uh, filtering capabilities of pandas and then i actually put everything all the execution thing into a nice little function and i um and i tested other uh, queries here so here i'm getting all the python um, resources um, page disambiguities so um, because Python could mean anything so there's got 
the the list of uh, wiki page links that you got earlier from the Wikipedia library as well. So you'll find all of them listed here that uh, Python could mean different things. It could be the snake Python, it could be the programming language, it could be anything else. So that list you could obtain from here. And you can get, so I selected the Python programming language here, that, that file. So you see I'm using escape um, characters here for the brackets that will not work in the, in the endpoint here. So I'm just taking the abstracts here and you see there are 420 results out of this and that's basically because of the multiple number of uh, languages, uh, the output, the response has uh, multiple languages here. So, end of it, I basically filtered using language abstract, so filter the language of abstract in for um, English and then language for label as English. And then I got just one result over here, which is where the label value is also English and where the abstract, um, that is a summary is also English. So that would be just one by six um, data frame. So that's how that's how you can query open web um it is very simple um and very structured so now that we've seen how to use wikipedia and how to use um sparkle wrapper we'll see how to connect these dots and uh, build a corpora and build a word to work model um using um the the localized data <coughs> or the specialized data so I imported all the necessary um, Python libraries here. And I'm using the same function that I created initially in the previous notebook and initiated the Sparkle endpoint. And here what I'm trying to do is to get um, hold of the Python programming language page. So like I said, the label of um, of a page, the RDFS label, it's going to give you the heading or the name of a page. So um, if you if you check this data here, DBpedia page is C++. So that is going to be Wikipedia. So this is basically going to be the same. Uh, this is uh, the other characters here. Um, but if you query it here, it's going to give you the same things. So um, Basically, the label is um, the RDFS label is the name that you would search for uh, and load as a Wikipedia page. So here again, I queried that I got the list here. So I extracted all the list here. Wiki page list would contain all the list of the pages that I got over here, and then I am basically uh, loading using a for loop um, all the content for all each of these pages in the list. And once I got this, so if you visualize, if you try to see, so I have 223 page objects and I have uh, just to visualize how it looks like. So the first page, I've got tons of data here. And I basically have the data for all programming languages. So I could, I could say that this is a corpora that contains information about different programming languages. So what I did is, very uh, nice form of uh, text processing. I, I just kept all the alphabets and the digits and then I converted them to the lower to lower case and then used the LNT case word tokenize uh, function to tokenize the data and use a simple lemmatizer lemmatizing uh, strategy to uh, tokenize um, lemmatize it. And then I ran it through the data. And then I use Jamesim's word to wake model to train it. And you can see how um, how uh, my uh, how the model works here. So if I want to check what is the most similar word for programming, so I have language, computer implementation. So they are, these uh, words kind of occur together or have uh, some sort of similarity. The most similarity would have programming with language. And then just visualize it. So I uh, compress that into two components using principal component analysis and then uh, used uh, matplotlib to visualize this data. So you can see, um, just for example, maybe link and external because external link, they're, uh, they've been occurring most of the times in, 
in a Wikipedia page. So they all go together over here and then programming and language compiler. So many of the uh, programming languages you'd find around here. So this is this is a little introduction to how um, I could leverage a Wikipedia Python library and how how I can use linked data to create my own corpus, um, specialized corpus as well for um, NLP applications. So this is done. And thank you, that was my talk. Um, I am okay with time. Awesome. That was a that was a fantastic talk. I really loved how you. Um, uh, I specifically loved the 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 whole word to wick bit, and you know me being like an NLP nerd, um, uh, I could I could already think about like so many things that that this could yeah. make sense. Yeah, this is very uh, exciting. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, so again, thank you so much for uh, you know um, explaining the entire workflow. Um, I think we have two questions. Um, so I'm gonna put this up on the screen. So the first one is what is the advantage of using rdfs and sparkle to store and query triples instead of using a dedicated sql table for each of the possible relations predicates um why would you so if you have to store them in a sql table like if you're doing it for your own organization if you've got an already set up database why would you want to invest uh time and energy in extracting these semantic information because that's that's actually a work of um, thousands of researchers uh, who actually gets these semantics uh, information um, and then puts them in proper structures. So if you have to do and replicate that yourself and then create your own SQL table, um, I think that's going to take some good amount of work. And SQL table is more like tabular format it's not mentor semantic information so there i I'd, I'd push back on that makes sense um i hope that answers the question of whoever who, whoever asked that question yeah. um uh, the next up is does spark uh, sparkle and or wikipedia python libraries support json ld out of the box uh i think so i think so Perfect. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, maybe maybe we can we can we can double check that and um, like yeah. you know in the in the breakout rooms uh, next. But I think that's um, uh, those were the two questions that were there. There was there was one question about um, the link for your um, notebook that you were sharing, and I think someone yeah. found it um, within the. It's doc. there. Okay. Yeah, it's there. If you if you if you download the slides from uh, EuroPython's uh, website, uh -huh. uh, the notebook links are there. Perfect. So I will I will I will post this link over to the to the chat room, and um, all, right. um, all of you feel free to go towards the the breakout room next, and um, you know have a detailed conversation. You can set up a Jitsi chat and just have um, no doubt about Sparkle and Wikipedia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.